Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today we're taking a look at another Android TV box. This one is the Probo X2 Air. Let's check it out. Now on the channel, I've reviewed uh, several um, Android TV boxes, and I always like when I get some that have a small footprint, great graphics quality, great graphics performance, as well as um, a updated operating system. Um, and this is definitely one of those boxes. Let's take a look at some of the specs so we can see uh, what this box provides. So taking a close look at the uh, specs in general, you have a quad-core processor. Uh, you do also have two gigabytes of processing memory and tor internal storage of 16 gigabytes. You also have dual band Wi-Fi. So this is great because it's going to support both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks uh, within your house. Bluetooth 4.0. And it also has Android Marshmallow 6.0. And that's really important because a lot of the boxes that we're seeing on the market today, um, especially in the Amazon marketplace, are either Android 4 or lesser. So having uh, Marshmallow 6.0 is good. It's not 7 yet, but 6 is definitely much better than some of the ones that we've seen on the market. You do have an HDMI connection, um, 4K output. You also see that it has Ethernet connectivity, IR sensor, uh, remote included, and it's going to be a flexible box that's going to have a very small footprint, and it's going to look well with your TV or your PC wherever you connect it. So let's go ahead and check and see what's in the box. Now in the box, you're going to have your TV box, an antenna that you'll connect to the TV box, uh, you have two remotes, uh, one traditional remote as you can see here, and then one that is very similar to what you would see like on a Roku, and you have a little remote dongle that you'd use. You have your power cord, which is very small and compact, HDMI cable, a user guide, and some additional instructions. Now, as you can see here, you have um, this is going to be your antenna connector right here. On the side, you have a couple ports. You have your power, you have USB, HDMI, Ethernet, and then you have optical out as well. Here, you have another USB port, micro SD, so you can put up to 128 gig SD in here. And then this is where the LED is going to light up. Uh, there's no clock on this one, uh, but as you can see, it's very small. If I put my hand on it, you can see that it's just a little bit larger than the palm of my hand, not very large whatsoever, and it's also very thin, so it's going to look good, not take up a lot of space, and you know what I would say? Some of the things I like doing with these little boxes is uh, putting a, sh a piece of Velcro here, and just Velcroing it behind your TV. That could be something you can do, but uh, that would affect line of sight if you use this remote. If you're using this type of remote using a dongle, then definitely you can keep this away from visibility. So that's uh, a pretty nice small box. Now once you complete the setup process, and it literally is just choosing your time zone, selecting your internet connection, and then you're presented with this screen, uh, it's probably one of the simplest ones that I've seen to date. And let's go over some of the things that we see. So you have a home screen, and I'm just going to use the mouse to move over. This is your app view, and you can see that there's very little installed. You have um, things like um, AirDroid for file movement, app installer, browser, it has Chrome, I have a game here, uh, Gmail, Netflix, sound, movie player, Miracast, so that you can share things from your phone and pair it. Uh, to the actual box itself. You do have Kodi, um, Happy Cast, which is again uh, for casting. The Play Store, because it is an Android box, you can see that. And then obviously some over the ear type um, updates and backup. So YouTube is also there present. Uh, if I go back, and what I'm going to do is just going to go up again, and we'll go um, over to home. You'll notice that here things are uh, nicely organized where I can select Kodi. Uh, Google Play, a task killer. On the bottom left hand corner uh, what you'll see is kind of devices that are connected. So you can see right now that it, Ethernet is not connected, Bluetooth is not connected, uh, and pretty much we're connected via Wi-Fi and that's why that icon is uh, highlighted. Uh, you can go into any of these areas. If I go movies and TV it's going to show me which apps are you know, designed for movie and TV. So each one of these sections is just going to go through and highlight apps that serve the specific category. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go down here for a second. We'll go into settings. Uh, now settings, because this is running Android, this is a very common view that we see with a lot of the Android TV boxes. So what we're going to do is come all the way over to about and in the about area we're going to see the version that we have here. And again, you're looking at it's using Android version 601 again good version here and then what you have is the last security patch was done up in August so let's go down and see yeah it doesn't look like there's anything else there uh, we can come back 
and you can see pretty much standard Android TV box uh, look and feel. The only difference is that this is a more current version. Uh, there is an area that we saw in the, let's go up to the apps, uh, that had some update uh, capabilities. So you'll notice that we can go over here and then what we can do is just choose um, the update screen. So here's an area where you can just check and see if there's an online update available. It's going to check to see if there's any system updates and it says that our system is updated. Um, I always like checking this because if you get an error message then you know that you know the the update uh, solution doesn't really work. In this case no error message it just told us that there was no update available which is a positive thing to see. Uh, so all in all everything looks uh, pretty straightforward. Now one of the things that you have here is you do have the ability to look at um, the screen in different ways. Uh, so you could you look at uh, a different launcher so this is going to be much larger. Um, it does have you can see these giant icons here um, and as we move over you can see the task killer so what we've in essence changed is kind of like the the look and feel of the desktop. Uh, I kind of like the big the big version like this so again same functionality just larger icons. Now launching Kodi is pretty straightforward uh, what you see is I'm loading um, Jarvis um, on and uh, this actually comes pre-configured which is really nice. Um, if I go over here you'll notice there's a lot of the the pre-configured add-ons are already available. Now keep in mind that Kodi for those of you who don't know what Kodi is I'll just give you a brief summary. Uh, Kodi is a media center technology software that allows you to enhance your uh, movie and TV content experience by adding these add-ons that you see here listed on the bottom that open up a world of content. Uh, many people refer to this as cord cutters uh, box because you, with just with the internet you can get a lot of the content that you would get through a cable provider or regular TV. Uh, I'll give you kind of a brief demo on one of the most uh, popular ones. So there's a couple of them. Uh, sports Devils, you can see there is one that people go to see sports. Uh, Exodus is probably one of the most well-known now when it, that, that uh, really focuses on content. And as you can see right now there's an update taking place. The key to using Kodi is to allow these updates to take place. If you start using the uh, apps when you start up uh, the Kodi app for the very first time or even subsequent times before the update takes place, things get a little wonky. And, you know, wonky being a technical term uh, pretty much means it kind of starts acting up. So I always wait for this. It just takes a couple seconds, you know, anywhere from 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and then I wait for it to update. Once it's updated, we'll go into the app and or the add-on so you can see how it works. Now Kodi itself is broken up into a couple areas. You have a picture area, video area, music area, program area, and then a system area. Now one of the things that you'll find is uh, there's a newer version of Kodi which is uh, Kodi uh, version 17 um, and this is actually version 16. This is the Jarvis version. You could update to the newest one by just uh, replacing this or even as you connect your account to the um, Google Marketplace, it will automatically update Kodi because Kodi is available on the Marketplace. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you there's a couple ways for those of you who are new to Kodi. You can add, access add ons by going into the add on area. And here you have a lot of different add ons that you can just access. And it's going to give you kind of a brief description of each one. Or what you could do is you can uh, just choose these shortcuts that are right here. These are kind of like uh, thumbnails for things that um, are the favorites or the most frequently used ones that have been pre-configured for us. Now what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose Exodus just to give you a sense of what Exodus does and how it works. I'm going to go into TV shows right? and I'm going to choose um, also we're going to come down and look at let's say most popular and you can see that there's a lot of categories here that you can choose from. And what it's going to do is it's going to serve up all this content that's uh, available on the internet for you. And you notice there's a lot of content. So that's why they refer to these boxes as the cord cutter boxes because this is all content that would require you to be connected to some type of service provider. But really easy, all you have to do is now go, I want to choose this one right here, Taboo. Um, choose it. It's very much like Netflix, choosing the season that I want to see. And then I'm going to choose an episode. Yeah, we'll, let's start on the first one, just so you can see um, how this thing streams content. Now, you know what we're looking. What's going to happen now is it's going to go and search the internet for this content. Once the content's available, it's going to give us options uh, as to how we stream that content. 
Uh, we're going to give it a second. We're going to let it find um, all the sources. I could cancel at any point. I don't have to wait for the timer to time out. Uh, but the longer I wait, the more options you potentially will have. But that's in theory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel at this point because I, I think it found enough sources. And what it's going to do is it's going to organize the sources based on resolution. So you'll notice here 1080p um, and then you have HD. So what we're looking for is how quickly does the box stream. So I'm going to choose this uh, service provider. Now some uh, some of the content that's out there may be slower than some than others. Some is faster, but you'll notice I chose that, and now immediately I'm streaming content. And now this content should be coming in at 1080p, and you can see that at the very bottom how it's 1080p. Now what I look for is smooth content. I look for the content not to stutter. Uh, this is going to be based on a couple things: your internet service provider, and it's also going to be your um, you know, the, the, the content provider as well. So that one was stopping a little bit, but I don't really think that that's the box. I think that was more the content generator. So let's go ahead and let's choose another one just so you can see how that works. What we'll do is we'll choose, um, why not? We'll choose Vikings. And we're going to go down. Let's go to the one of the last season. Everything is organized really nicely. And what I'm going to do is just going to come down and choose this one just to see. And same thing is going to happen. It's going to source the content. If we probably won't want wait for it to do all of it, but we'll see. You know, it got to 93. I'm going to cancel. I think that's more than enough. I'm going to see what sources I have and what resolution. Uh, and we'll just go ahead. No 1080p versions, only high definition. High definition is at times could be 1080p, but in most cases it's going to be 720p. Notice how fast this thing is streaming. Notice how um, Again, it, it, there's no stutter because, uh, once again, it's a combination of things that makes this uh, product work well. If I go in here, this is 720p. At 720p, this is pretty good. Uh, so you can see you know, just the overall content coming across. Very, very nice. So, again, nice, um, nice options, nice flow, and the box is performing really well. And as I'm even leaving or uh, moving out of it, you'll notice that the content is still streaming without any issues. So now the box comes with two remotes that we're looking at, but I'm, you right now are seeing kind of a pointer move back and forth. And you notice that I have this, this remote that I'm not touching. I uh, just want to show you what I'm doing. So over here is the other remote, which has kind of an air mouse capability. So you can use this for game playing um, as well as controlling the TV. So again, this is this one right here. But then what I'm doing right here is just moving the mouse around because it has kind of like an air button that you can press right here that now you'll notice nothing's happening. But I can still control the TV. And then by enabling this button here, I have that air mouse, which means if I'm playing a game, I can use this game controller like this. Uh, for negotiating, turning, and doing things, or I can use it like this, almost like a Wii remote. Now, if you're wondering what playback for other things, we saw Cody a little bit, but this is another good way to see what the performance looked like. Uh, what we can do here is just highlight any content that is available here on YouTube and then just select it uh, for playback. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down and we're going to choose uh, something here on the screen and just show you how quickly the box responds. So what I've just done is I just switched to my air mouse. Uh, it's a lot easier to negotiate uh, you know, YouTube this way. And I'm going to select uh, this specific one here. So we're just going to select it, and we're going to see the playback. And you'll notice um, loaded the screen pretty nicely. And the content is starting to come up really nicely, too. Everything is moving at nice speed, uh, really no stutter. And that's what you want in a box, something that's that fast. Now it's pretty unavoidable that as you're using uh, the box that things slow down. This happens with Apple TV, it happens with iPhones, um, and it happens with Android devices as well. So you have this little task killer here that you can use. I don't really use this often, but let's say you run into a situation where things are running slow. What you could do is just select this, and it's going to go through and clean up uh, the memory or any apps that are misbehaving or not releasing its memory um, which could happen from time to time. Really nice little function there just to clean up things and keep things running snappy. So this concludes my review of the Pro Bowl X2 Air Android TV box. Very capable box that's very thin, doesn't take up a lot of space and also provides great performance and content uh, to your TV 
For those of you who are looking for a cord cutting solution, this is definitely something to consider. If you have any comments or questions about the product, leave it in the comment area below. If you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, there's a subscribe button right there. If you don't mind clicking on that, that'd be great. And there may be a video over here that you may be interested in as well. Thanks for watching.